recording this now. Now, a few words. In future, only post letters to the uh, assignment tab on Easy Class. Okay? Because I've had people sending letters to my email, on Telegram, on Patreon, and on uh, the assignment tab on Easy Class. So in future, I'll schedule it and I'll post the link. I don't know what's happened here. I don't know, something wrong with uh, Zoom. I don't know. I'll try and sort it out, uh, do it properly in future. Anyway, now, so I, I posted a letter in the assignment tab, but I noticed later that Joseph posted a task with a different, um, well, a different task. So we've got two. So I don't know. So I'm going to do the one that um, I set you, which is, uh, is Kathy Jones. Okay, if we've got time, we'll take a look at uh, Mr. Mustafawi. Okay, so in the future then, don't send me anything. I'm going to put the writing assignments in the assignment tab on Easy Class. Some people didn't see it. Some people went to the class wall. Some people were writing on Telegram. What's the, you know, what's the, um, the task where are the notes? Etc. So in future, from next week on, right, it'll be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you will find the assignment in Easy Class on the assignment tab on that page. Post or upload your letter there. And I will download it, add it to the file, and we'll take a look at it here. Okay? Is that uh, okay now? If, is everybody uh, clear on how we will do things in future? Yeah? Okay, sweet. So without further ado, let's get on to screen share. Well, it was Kathy Jones. We'll do this one first. Okay. I'll put the chat box over here. So, um... I'll go through these letters first, and then we might have time for questions. If you have any questions or comments, you can type them in the chat box. If you want me to turn your microphone on, you can raise your hand, and I will, I will do so. Mm. So, now, um, we've got some letters here. I, I don't know if you've had letters corrected before, Atife, I don't know how, how you pronounce it, Atifa, Atife, sent me a letter. I think it's for the, the other task. So I've got a few here. And if yours don't get assessed now, let me know and I'll do yours first next, next time. Okay. So put the changes on and I'll load the corrections in Easy Class after this session. I've got some lessons immediately afterwards, so the video recording might take an hour or two, but I'll upload it onto YouTube and I'll put the private link because you won't be able to see it on YouTube un unless you have the uh, unlisted link and I'll put the unlisted link in easy class so you can watch it so kathy jones kathy jones now let me have a quick look at the case notes now i've seen these before let me just remind myself so uh 25 year old single receptionist okay okay we have to write a referral letter to the gynecology registrar and importantly ask to be informed of the outcome. So it's a suspected uh, ectopic pregnancy. That's what, that's what we think. So the plan, ring the duty gynecology registrar. So urgent 
assessment. So that has to be included. Urgent assessment, okay, we have to send a referral and we also have to make sure that we are asking to be kept informed of the outcome. Okay, so these are the key points that we have to include in this. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. Now, what else have we got? Just have a quick look at the notes. Subjective, stomach pain. Okay, so let's get on. Writing to refers. Okay, now, now, first things first. Now, uh, because we don't have the DOB here, if we did, we wouldn't need to put the age. And also, do we really need to know that she's a receptionist? Is that the important thing that we need right in the introduction? Now, if the occupation is pertinent or relevant, as it sometimes is, then again, you need to judge every K, every letter task on its merits. I don't really think here we really need to be telling the um, registrar urgently that she's a receptionist. Maybe that's not so urgent. So I wouldn't include that. Mm. Miss Kathy Jones for your assessment. Now, uh, Miss Kathy Jones, okay, I, if you could in include that, but we don't really need it as such. Presenting with possible like topic, for instance, if you're urgent assessment. Now, we need to mention somewhere. Ah, okay, we have it here. Please keep me updated. So that's good. So, in terms of uh, viewers, many of us Miss Jones is uh, single. However, she has a partner. Well, if she has a partner, then she's not single. Or if you mean she's unmarried, which is not quite the same thing. Uh, I don't really, I don't know if we really need to include this, or we need to make it it clear exactly what that is. So she's single as in she's not married, but she, she has a, a partner. Now, these days, if you have a partner, you're not single. So, you know, just be aware of, of that. He's been on POP for last. Now, right, because the, the last, it's an, an ordinal, the first, the last, the second, the third. If it's an, an ordinal, we need an article for the last two months. And since then, uh, don't need a, a comma there. She has had irregular menstrual periods. Therefore, therefore, we don't really need that. Therefore, she is unsure about so right now. We could cut this down. Now, I haven't checked the word count. It doesn't look particularly long, and that's not so important. But So she's been on POP, she's irregular periods, and is unsure. Well, right. So you don't actually need that. Just say, you know, and she is unsure about her last date or about her last menstruation date. That's better, not last date of her menstruation. A possessive, we don't really need that. That doesn't quite work, so get rid of that. And we don't need an article in front of menstruation either. Okay, previous day. Previous day, well, that's not very good, is it? Um, I would put the date. Now, also, the previous day, previous day of what? You can't have a previous day without us having some date to measure it against. So that's no good. We want, uh, what's, what's this? Present perfect and simple are together. Yes, of course you can. So we need to change that. We need a date, uh, some date needed here, not the previous day. Miss Jones presented to my clinic with history of lower abdominal pain, which is mainly like which had started since the previous day. So why have you got previous day, previous day? That doesn't quite work, does it? Uh, which had started the previous day. Now, again, previous day, unless you tell me what day this actually is, then I don't know what that previous day refers to. Okay, so... Always have a date at the start, okay? Then, previous day, we know it happened the day before the date, okay? On the, exam, uh, on the examination, there was a tenderness, 
accompanied with a tender right phonics in the jack tenderness accompanied with a tender right phonics in vaginal examination uh in the ex or in her vaginal ex we need something like uh, a pronoun or an article in her ex vaginal examination she was scheduled to review well she wasn't she is not going to review anything she's going to be reviewed so she was scheduled for not to review on the following day again without a date with no idea when these days are what's what's the following day the following day to what what's the previous day what for assessment and blood test today's review mm, on today's review this jones's pain has worsened since last night okay that's good present perfect has worsened since last night and also which is also and it is also right so uh using this relative pronoun here hmm. miss jones's pain has worsened since last night and also is is radiating well i don't know if we would use present continuous because like you said it's okay so her pain has worsened and it is radiating so it's radiating now so it didn't radiate last night not very clear i'm not quite sure what that means there so and also radiated so i would uh, if it happened last night and also uh make it simple past radiated then that is is clearer and also uh, so it runs this night and also and which also yeah so you do it like that so you put your relative pro noun there runs this night and which also radiated to the left shoulder also she has noticed article a slight vaginal bleeding examination of the other tender and guard, gardening I'm not sure what what word that is what's that supposed to, to uh, be anybody anybody tell me what that word is gardening or guarding garden not is it a guarding are you sure okay perhaps whether vital premises were within normal range within the normal range articles notably a urine pregnancy test was positive okay i know that was within the normal range uh notably a urine present test was positive did you mention anything about having a urine pregnancy test before because it this doesn't really flow it's it's like you've dropped this sentence in out of nowhere where's it come from all right so you're talking about, okay, she's got pain. I examined her and it showed this, 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 this. Oh, and by the way, her piss test was positive. Where's that come from? Where's, you know, it's just like that sentence is dropped in and it's not very clear. So you need to have some mention, previous mention that she brought a test or she was going to, you know, if, if you drop in a sentence with no connection or no previous uh, uh, signaling it interrupts the flow of a letter yeah based on the above findings i wish it's a present it would be greatly appreciated why would it be greatly appreciated i keep saying this you know why would it be greatly why would you greatly appreciate it i would greatly appreciate if you would do your job is that what you're saying? You don't need that. You can you can use it, but nobody's. You know, I don't I don't go to the supermarket, you know, and say I would gratefully appreciate it if you would sell me some some food and household <laughs> household items. <laughs> you wouldn't say that, would you? They're not doing you a personal favour if you and also greatly appreciate. You know, if you were doing me. A favor I might say thanks I appreciate it but only in that sense 
assess and manage it urgently. Please keep me updated on her condition. Okay, okay. So, mm, so some things we don't need. Lots of missing pronouns, articles, and prepositions. Uh, Rosita, you've got to watch. Got to watch this, right? Lots of uh, article here, conjunction here, pronoun, preposition, article, article, relative pronoun, article, etc. So uh, a fair bit of work, I think. I mean, you know, it's on the right the right lines. It's not. It's not. It's not bad. But still, if you want to get a B, there's a few things that you've got to work on. Okay. So moving on quickly, quickly. Thank you for seeing Miss Jones. If I well, you've put that there. You don't need to tell me twice. And she's a woman, really, with a pronoun like Miss. Who would have thought it? So strictly speaking, we can omit this. I think. And then we've got a nice relative clause. Fear assessment and management, what? Your fear assessment and management, what? Would be appreciated, are requested, are required, what? There's no verb there. Just your fear assessment and management and would be grateful and I would be grateful if you inform me or if you could inform me about her outcome so this needs a bit of rewording we need a pronoun there and your further assessment and management what would be appreciated i don't know but we need something we need some verb there or verb phrase i should dare say Okay, Miss Jones has a family history of a deep vein thrombosis, well, of deep vein thrombosis. She could use just on appeals and positions. She had a new partner and stopped what she had. She doesn't have a new partner now. She had a new partner and stopped POP or stopped using POP for the last two months, plural. On 15 second of nine, Miss Jones presented me. She presented you. She presented to you. If she presents you, it means that she gave you something. And uh, I don't think she, she gave you a complaint as a gift. She presented to me. Well, of course it was to um, you, who, if you're writing this, you want to present it to anybody else. Okay. With a complaint of little dumb pain, which was worse at the writing act also. Oh, sure, she had an irregular bleeding over the last menstrual period. An irregular bleeding over the... So what? One singular bleeding over the period? So a period lasts a... Well, I mean, I'm not an expert, but it lasts a few, uh, it lasts a few days, perhaps a week. So what? An irregular? So it only happened once? So you've got to be careful here because, you know, so an irregular bleeding, I think... I don't think we need this article here. Uh, therefore, she was asked to return the next morning for blood test, for a blood test and assessment. Now, you've got to make com complete sentences. You've got to make them. So missing articles is no good. Okay. Today, Miss Jones is uh, with worsened symptoms, worsened or worse, worsening, doesn't Matter you can use for simple past. Oh, symptoms. Now, if you if you are listing your symptoms, instead of a semicolon, you should use a colon if it's like a list or a comma. Constant severe low abdominal pain, slight vaginal bleeding overnight, and had been fainted. Why is that past perfect passive? Had been fainted? That doesn't work. So, break it up. Put a comma there, okay? And had fainted while waiting in the reception today. On examination, tenderness has been noted. Has been noted. Again, why is it present perfect passive? I noted. If it's happening today, I mean, you know, 
depends on when it happened, of course, if it was quite some hours ago, you can use present, present perfect. But today, you can use present, uh, present uh, simple, or simple past, because it's happening that, you know. Uh, I noted, or tenderness was, instead of present perfect, just make it simple past. Tenderness, some, uh, tenderness was noted, or I noted, I found, Oh, her right, Iliac Fossa with a guardian and the rebound tender. In addition, of uh, excitation, 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 with tenderness in that chronic period test was positive. Okay, her vital signs are normal. Now, this is a bit short sentence. Her, her vital signs are normal. It's a bit like the, the previous um, uh, letter. Now, you can see here how the pregnancy test is part of the previous sentence. Whereas with the previous letter, it's just, it's well, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't uh, laugh, but notably, uh, really, <laughs> she had a positive pregnancy test, notably. Well, yes, I would think that would be, <laughs> be notable. Uh, but anyway, but that aside, uh, her vital signs are normal. So you could have put that in there which is good. But again, we've got this sentence here, her vital signs are normal. It's just kind of, of dropped in. It's dropped in with no connection to what came before it. So we've got to be careful here. In view of the above, I suspect she has now the pregnancy, which needs urgent management. Excess measure on the outcome. Now that's very good conclusion. Very good. So again, it, reiterates and says exactly what you want the reader to do, essentially. Okay, so that's pretty good. So, not too bad. That needs a little bit of work, you know, okay. Preposition, articles, article use, a uh, couple of verb forms there had been fainted, what's that, past perfect passive, has been noted, present perfect a passive. So we need to work on uh, a little bit here. So the main thing here is grammar. Missing articles, verb forms, okay? And a, a preposition or two. But you know, not that bad, but we do need some work here. So as uh, I'm writing to request for urgent assessment and management of urgent assessment and management of what, who is going to uh, assess her the your, well, to, to uh, request your is better. I, I think the urgent assessment management of, of Miss Cathy. Um, you would, now use of Christian names. We were talk somebody mentioned this uh, a couple of days back, and I forgot to elaborate. Uh, Miss Cathy, you would probably only address her as that if she were young, if she were younger than she is now. So, for example, if it's a kid, an obvious kid, I, you know, I, I don't know, up to about 10, 11-ish, I don't know, up to... Up to 12 ish, you would probably just use a, a Christian name of Kathy. Okay. Uh, Miss Kathy, you would probably use that around about 12 ish, 12, 13, you know, young kind of teens. Yeah. But once we get past the teens, it's probably Miss, Miss Jones or surname. Yeah. So usually, if we're quite young, just use their first name. If they're in the tweeny kind of, Period, you can use the first name, Miss Cathy. After that, really, 18, you know, you should really use uh, her sir name, Miss Jones. 25 about sing a woman. Well, you can use it, but does that matter? Okay, who is presenting with signs and symptoms suggestive of ectopic pregnancy? Okay, good. Initially, Miss Cameron went to my clinic who complained of abdominal pain. The pain was worse in the right hand, possibly not tennis. She was living with a new partner. 
I'm taking risk control for two months. Should make a Oh, uh, okay. Now, shouldn't this come under, you know, previous medical and social history? Um, you know, because you're not supposed to mix things up in a paragraph, right? Your paragraph is meant to have a single function or purpose. Yeah. So this, so this talking about she, she was living with a partner, but she doesn't have one now. I thought she split from boyfriend. So um, I would be tempted to put that social history in a separate paragraph. Right? Don't don't mix different detailage in a paragraph. What we're talking about here should only be. What happened when she came to the clinic? She came, she had complaints and blah, 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 blah. Examination, I ordered some tests, etc. Then the next day, you know, so you're, you're describing a chronology, you're developing and telling a story. It's a narrative, yeah? So I would, I would possibly put the history somewhere else maybe lower down yeah okay so what's uh, your boyfriend who had irregular cycle and irregular cycle right and did not remember her last menstrual period or she she has or have right? the examination was it examine well right so it's either the examination was or the examination were so i think it's only one so that should be was don't forget your subject and verb. The examination was unremarkable. For which what? For which? A blood test for which? What does that which refer to? What does that relative pronoun refer back to? The examination was unremarkable. Why not simply just use and? And a blood test and reassessment was scheduled because that doesn't make sense and a blood test and reassessment was scheduled for tomorrow. Okay, so that's better, better, better. Next day, the next day. Article, the next day, the last day. The next day, Miss Kathy developed. So, right, simple past implies the next day she developed the pain. The pain developed on the next day. Now, I'm not sure if it started precisely on that day. Didn't it start the night before? You know, because how this reads, the pain started on that day. And I thought it happened before, the evening before. I think that's what it says in the case notes, the evening before. So, uh, make it past the perfect then. I don't see the constant pain the previous the previous evening day. Uh, with slight vaginal bleeding, she has positive pregnancy test, a positive pregnancy test, and a clear urine dipstick test. All right, so. Again, it's, it's kind of like you're mixing things up. So you talk about, so she came in with pain, I examined her and I saw, et cetera, et cetera. Also, a pregnancy test. Yeah, so if you look at this here, right, we've, we've, we've got three different, we've got three different, different types of information here. Okay, so, We've got what happened when she came in, okay? She came in complaining she had this constant pain had appeared, okay? Uh, I examined her and I saw rebound and tenderness, etc. Okay. Then also her pregnancy test showed it was positive, you know, so establishing a chronology because it's jumping about 
all over. We need a logical flow of information. Okay, we've got any furthermore, and I don't know why that's a definite, sorry, well, that's a capital there. Is it tennis and fellows and has expectation? And then without any explanation, we've got another sentence that's dropped in. Without any explanation or link to the previous sentence, this sentence just goes boom. Oh, Miss Kathy has a family history. So you would group this information usually on the social and medical history. Usually people put something like regarding her I mean, you know, social and medical history. She's been pregnant, no previous pregnancy, and she's got this and she's got that. That's usually how people would introduce that instead of just dropping in a sentence. So the order of information here needs a bit of reworking, I think. Okay, in view of the above, I don't know why that's a capital. My provisional diagnosis is a topic pregnancy. Therefore, I would appreciate urgent evaluation and management. Should you require further information, do not hesitate to contact me. Okay, well, urgent's there, okay. And you want to be kept informed of the outcome, so I would uh, mention that there, therefore, uh, please keep me, because it says in, in the task, I think that, um, what's it say in this a task, ask to be kept informed, yeah? Please keep me updated of the outcome, okay? So you've got to make sure that you get everything in, in the task, for your task. Fulfillment score. You've got to do it. Okay. Let's just have it to contact me. So, not too bad. The grammar's not so bad. Articles may be missing here and there. Uh, a couple of articles. I think the organization of some of the information could be worked on a little bit. Okay. I think that we have to... Um, Try to group information according to type per paragraph. Don't, examination, I found this. Oh, now she is pregnant. Oh, and she's got a family history. It confuses the reader and it disrupts a logical flow of a letter. Okay. What else have we got here? Okay, Miss Jones. I says, Miss Treatment to the patient of mine. Okay, thank you for seeing. Miss Jones, we don't really need that comma. Sorry, that full stop, and you didn't put it there. So, Kathy Jones, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, has an assessment and emergency treatment. Miss Jones, I suppose emergency is good because it says urgently assess. Okay. There's definitely a patient of mine who signs, symptoms, and lab results are suggestive of topic pregnancy. Okay, that's not bad. That uh, tells us what. We want that you you can thank them at the start. I, I just say I'm writing to request. Usually, I mean this is just my my personal style. I think it's more direct. I would usually, you know, what do you want them to do? I want you to assess them. I want you to, you know, give me something. Do something. I want you to urgently assess her. Okay. You can put this thank you, I mean, you can put the thank you part at the end if you have to. Okay, the patient first comes into my practice. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's not so long. Okay, usually I wouldn't use these kind of sentences because it's obvious from, from the context, you know, but uh, most like, most people tend, tend uh, to use Initially, Miss Jones presented, or, or something such as that, you know. First came to my practice, and I said, I'm 24 hours history of having history pain, I was in the right. Here we have Foster. Physical examination. Who's what? Is it her? So we need a pronoun. So it says complete sentences, all right? 
So we need the pronoun or an article in front of this noun phrase. So we've got a noun, yeah? Okay, we've got an adjective, the head word, it's a noun. So we need a pronoun or an article. So either her physical examination or the physical. So I would make it her, her physical examination. Reveal, tenderness, tenderness in the right for fix was revealed to a vaginal examination. Patient, the patient. Sexually active. Now, you see, we've got you. You can use the patient, but it's usually more polite to put the patient's name. Yeah. So, Miss Jones first came. Then you can use the patient. Oh, for most people, you can just use a pronoun. Her, she. That works fine. Yeah? Mm, period two months ago, sure, of her last special period due to regular cycles or due to having regular cycles due to non symptoms. We've discharged the patient, which we should come back for the morning for test and re uh, for test and re well for testing for either for a test or for testing and re assessment. So, which is so, uh. I would put the date first because it makes a sentence a little bit awkward if you put Miss Jones on a sec on 16th of a second. So 16th of a second, Miss Jones. Now, I think this 16th of a second, I think this is the day after. So it's the day that you're writing this. Yeah. So it's in the past. So if she's coming this morning you saw her then you're writing this letter later it would be simple past miss jones reported her pain has worsened and is now severe sever severe are not the same word to sever means to cut off or amputate the severe means intensive is now severe and constant and irradiated to the left shoulder tip. Associated with mild vaginal constant. Associated with mild constant. So I would probably put the mild transvaginal bleeding part before the shoulder tip, you know, because the previous pain was in the stomach, well, you know, that like part of it. So I'll put that first because it's like, oh, pain, this that pain, it's now always oh, associated with it's jumping back and forth. Can we use today? Well, yeah, because it is today. She she came to see you sometime on this day and you're writing the letter on, you know, today. She also reports, well, you, she can, you can use present simple, but again, it's in the past. She also reported a faintness spell, a faintness spell, a fainting spell. Reported a fainting spell, avoided the consultation upon examination, BP, well, okay. This looks like notes. A BP was, was 70, pulse 96, uh, increase, no results. Again, to avoid this looking like note form, you know, we need to uh, use pronouns. Pregnancy test results, uh, pregnancy test. Okay, and again, this is dropped in. It's like a add-on sentence. It's like a tack-on, add-on sentence right at the end. Pregnancy test results came back a positive. Did it say anything about having that? Uh, so... I will put some introductory phrase in front of this. Uh, she also had a, a pregnancy test whose results came, you know. Don't just simply drop drop in a sentence. Um, I notice this is something that everybody's done so far. You drop in a sentence, so well, that's not, it's not a complete sentence in any case. 
and you need to have some connection to what came before it. Yeah? Okay. Rapid deterioration warrants emergency treatment. Okay, yeah, that is good. I've been touched to follow her progress. Well, you will be in touch, but um, you want to ask to be kept informed. So that's part of a task. So for proper task fulfillment, you need to include that because it's in my task. You know, it says write a referral, ask to be kept informed. That's part of a task. So you've got to include it or have some hint that you want them to tell you what is going on. Progress. So, uh, you know, I'm going to talk to a moment. Uh, if you can keep uh, me informed, I will. Now you can put a pre appreciate here because they are doing you kind of a, a favor here. So you can use I would appreciate it here. At the start, when you say, I would highly appreciate it if you could see this patient. Well, why would you do that? Because that's, that's their job. You know, we're not doing you a personal favor. But here, I mean, it's not strictly a, a favor, but you're making a request. So you can use appreciate here. That's the difference between the two. Okay, so not so bad. How many have I got? Mm, I'm not going to have time to do all these. I'm not going to have, have time to do all these. But those that don't get done today, I'll try and make sure that uh, you get done first next time. And I still have uh, some letters uh, for Miss, Mr. Mustafawi. Mm, I might have a session later tonight if I've got time to look at those, but we'll see. See how it goes. So, dear colleague, dear Miss Kathy Jones, I know it's a single woman. Okay, uh, why not just use her name? Urgent. Uh, mission uh, to uh, a single one of mission regarding uh, for further assessment. So, so uh, it's kind of disjointed, sorry, disjointed, I should say. So I would probably, I'm writing to refer Miss Jones for urgent assessment regarding my provisional diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. So I would probably do it like that. Because the, the way that you, the syntax here, the word order here is a little bit unnatural. It's not, I mean, you know, I know that um, communicative effectiveness is more important, but the assessors, for a high score, they do want you to be as natural and native-like as possible like it or not, that's uh, how the examination works. So sometimes the phrasing that some people use is not as natural as it could possibly be. It needs a little bit of work. So I'm writing to refer Miss, Miss Jones for further assessment, urgent permission regarding my diagnosis of, instead of for a mission regarding this, you know, so you've made one request there about something else, and then you've made another request there. So, you know, needs a little bit of reordering, I think. In terms of for medical history, you've been taking POP. Okay, now that's, now that's not bad. Now, you remember that I, I said uh, a couple of letters ago about mixing types of information in a paragraph, yeah? So I did say that, you know, if you want to use this stuff, and I think it's, it's, it's pertinent, it should be in a separate section introduced using some kind of phrase like, regarding her medical history, in terms of her medical history, etc. Something such as that, yeah? That would work fine. Okay. 
Initially, Miss Jones presented a surgery complaining of the lower abdominal pain. Well, surely A, because when you introduce something for the first time, you use an indefinite article. So I think you did before. I probably imagine I'll turn this on. Uh, quite. I don't know why we're using that as an, an adverb. Not sure what that uh, means quite. Tenderness, or it was quite tender. You can use it as an adjective. It was quite tender, but if it's ten, ten, a ness, that doesn't work. Am I right? Fine, so no medical findings. I should return for blood tests the next morning. On to date, right, right. Why is it passive? Has been deteriorated by whom? If it's passive, somebody's done some action. Has been deteriorated by whom? So, can't use passive. Has deteriorated. And she developed, uh, so present perfect. And she developed a pain on her, well, what, on her left shoulder tip or in? Surely it's like in, it's not on. In the left shoved it more she put slightly slightly vaginal bleed. So if we've got an adverb, it modifies your verb. But we've got a noun in between. So we can't really use that. So it's got to be slight. Make it an adjective instead of a adverb. Okay. Because we've got a a vaginal, well, vagina isn't a noun in it, so vaginal pertaining to, I suppose that's an adjective. So we've got a verb, adjective, yeah, so that's going to be an adjective too. Can't be an, an adverb. She reported slight vaginal bleeding during last night or during the previous night. It's either last night, but because you've put a during, during the previous night. Uh, examination along with a positive pregnancy test, I've written up, are suggestive of a topic pregnancy for which she is promptly, she's not referring anything, she's being referred, for which she is, is promptly being referred. Have I spelled that right? No, there's a two, two R's in referred, yeah, yeah. Put me being referred to the hospital. Your first assessment we appreciate. Please inform me on the follow up plan and do not. Ah, you see, that's good. Part of a task. Please inform me and don't hesitate to contact me if you have any further queries. That's very good. Very good. Okay, now I'm going to have to go because I've got a student coming in five minutes. I've got to get sorted out for that. So, how many letters have we done for today? I see this one. We've done one, two, three, four, five, that's usually all we, we have time for. for uh, so, I've still got Sandeep, so we'll do yours first next time. Shaheen, we'll do yours first next time. And G, I think we've looked at one of yours before, but uh, we'll We'll do yours first next next time as well. And I still have some. Uh, somebody that some people sent me for Mr. Mustafawi. So we'll have to try and have another session. Possibly later this evening. I'll let you know because I have to I've got to see some students now and I have to go out to class and do a few other things. So possibly this evening. So I've just got a couple of minutes. Uh, does anybody have any questions, any last minute questions that they want to ask? Now you can either raise your hand and I'll turn your microphone on or you can type it, okay. Uh. So we've got a question here. If a case note provided these name, that case do you write the given name and address afterward? Sincerely, or just doctor. Uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure what you mean there. If you if you know the name of the person, then you then you then you close with yours sincerely. 
if you don't know, then it's your safe, it's your safe filling. So uh, just a doctor would be fine if that's what you're asking. Okay. Do you not think my letter was enough for uh, C plus? Uh, do you really want me to be giving grades out in public? Don't forget this video will be available. If you want to, if you want to ask those kind of questions, I suggest that you do it in privately. Unless you want me to discuss grading in public, that's up to you. Um, we've got a question, can you tell regard how to put an article S? Um, sorry, I don't know what that, that question means. Are you talking about, uh, can I explain how to use articles? If that's what you mean, we'll have to have another session there. We can use patient name only once. Well, usually the convention is to start a paragraph. As Joseph said, I mean, that's what solution need to say, so, you know, put the patient's name at the beginning of a paragraph. And then every subsequent use, you can use she, her. You can use the patient that's kind of impersonal. So I think that pronoun is better okay two minutes i have to go because i've i've got somebody coming at uh, 11 so i'll be online on telegraph a bit later about half 11 in about half an hour i'll be i'll be available uh to answer any any other questions so i hope this session was uh, useful for you Today, it's just, you know, using Patreon and Easy Class, this is the first time I've used it. I know other YouTubers use it. I don't know if any teachers actually use this as a model. This might be a first, I'm not quite uh, sure. But it's just a way to, I mean, um, for example, I used $15 of your uh, patronage to pay for Zoom. So this is pro now. This is pro. Zoom, I don't have to, to worry about it stopping after 40 minutes. I can save to the cloud. I can, you know. So uh, your subscriptions have had a, a positive effect. I can have a set, I can have this on all day long. Not that I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm going to do, but I could have it on, you know, for an hour or two, thanks to your subscription. So anyway, I'll have to go. I've got to talk to someone else at 11. So uh, I'll share the files and the video once I finish with my next student. So uh, talk again soon. If you've got any other questions, send me a, a PM. Okay.